I'm going to talk about the no uh, code staggered conjugate gradient routine uh, performance on the Intel PNL. Um, so, uh, uh, milk is the lattice QCD um, code, and this is the John work uh, between the uh, milk collaboration and the Stefan Nurk, um, JLab, and Intel. So, the outline uh, the motivations for us to optimize this routine on KNL, and uh, I'm going I'm not going to talk much about the architecture here, and uh, but the, the uh, uh, Q5X library that we developed and uh, the benchmarks and performance we have so far. So the reason we want to uh, uh, the performance of the CG routine is that uh, uh, the uh, most uh, time-consuming part of the milk code, uh, both in evolution and measurement. And then our routine, the d-slash operator, which is the matrix vector uh, multiplication, and matrix is the sparse matrix, with non uh, zero off diagonal elements that links the uh, neighbors and the third neighbor. Um, that takes the bulk of the work. So uh, 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 I mentioned this here. Um, so it's a summary sheet for KML. And uh, the uh, C uh, MCD RAM peak bandwidth this is right uh, around the 500 gigabytes for string benchmark and around the 388 gigabytes per second for read only. But we want to refer uh, to this number here because it's more relevant to the bandwidth that we want to achieve because we it's a read heavy uh, routine. So, uh, as I mentioned, the Q5X library is uh, developed from these uh, many uh, um, um, organizations, and uh, it's written in intrinsics, which is possible to uh, various Intel architecture instructions, and it supports MPI and OpenMP. Currently, we have uh, both single and double precision in our CG routine. So uh, the data structure in this library is an array of structure uh, of arrays. So the structure of arrays uh, like this. So it's uh, the inner loop, the most inner array is the vec length, which is 16 for the single and the A for double precision. So the data layout is even all checkboard the four dimensional letters. Uh, we want to separate even all letters because it's uh, simpler for the uh, matrix vector production. And we divide the letters into four dimensional or three dimensional sub blocks. Um, and uh, then this graph here shows uh, more clearer about the data layout. So we have uh, the data at x, y, z, t, and x plus and x over two y, z, t, etc. cetera, stored contiguously in memory and uh, in uh, when we bring those data to a ZPU. So this NX is the uh, lattice dimension along the X direction. And uh, so the uh, uh, hardware configuration that we have for the uh, our benchmarks, uh, one's the Intel Endeavor cluster, which has two versions of KNL for use. And uh, we compare those results from the ones on the Intel Broadwell cluster and uh, the uh, NERSC Cori phase one cluster, which has the Haswell uh, machine. So uh, the benchmarks are all in double precision. We uh, run a baseline milk code with MPI only, and then MPI and OpenMP, and then we uh, uh, plug in the Q5X library and uh, see how we get those performance on one multiple nodes. So this is a graph showing the uh, baseline mill code with MPI only on KNL single node. It uh, uses up to 256 MPI ranks, which is four MPI rank per core. And uh, so we see that when we use the MCD RAN, um, we, uh, we saw a boost of three times in the performance. So this x-axis is the lattice size which 
is the problem size, and the y-axis is the total performance in gigaflops. Um, so this MCD ran, uh, it both uh, cache or flat mode, we don't, didn't see much um, performance difference, so they're pretty close. And uh, this plot shows the baseline mill code with MPI and the open MP. So we fix the number of threads, but we vary the MPI rank. So that's the thread per MPI rank. And uh, we compare the KNL with Haswell single node. So we saw that uh, uh, with the on KNL, the <coughs> performance is best when we use only one MPI rank which is around 80 gigaflops per second. And while on Haswell, uh, more than one MPR rank help. Um, and then uh, we use two threads and one thread per call on KNL and Haswell, that's because uh, we got uh, the uh, best performance out of those. Um, Um, so the uh, Q5X library, um, the, uh, we, uh, um, we want to measure the uh, dislash bandwidth on single KNL because the, this routine is uh, uh, bandwidth limited. But uh, we talk about the uh, gigaflops in our performance. That's because it's, um, it's a convention where we compare the performance across the different architectures. So we saw that uh, uh, the uh, the bandwidth increases with the uh, increased uh, uh, problem size. And uh, the model bandwidth, which means the, uh, the, uh, the minimum amount of data we have to bring uh, from memory, uh, is 80% uh, of the peak read bandwidth with the uh, hardware prefetched only. Um, so, and uh, we saw that uh, the, uh, with, uh, um, we saw that 15% uh, of uh, cache misses so far in our code. So then I'll show you the uh, performance we saw uh, with uh, improved uh, Q5X. So uh, the uh, three parts here, one, uh, A and B, are the performance on KNL with um, flat mode and cache mode and flat mode uses MCD RAM. So we see that uh, the performance increased to 1.5 compared to the baseline mill code, and uh, it doesn't differ much between the flat and cache mode. So this is a weak scaling um, with fixed problem size per core. And then the third graph is the uh, DDR mode, which doesn't use uh, MCD RAM. And uh, these two plots shows the uh, um, multi-node weak scaling performance on um, Broadwell and the KNL. So it's both uh, up to 16 nodes and uh, then up to a uh, four-dimensional communication um, on lattice. So uh, we saw that on KNL, the, uh, we were able to uh, further boost the performance up to more than two times compared to baseline mail code. And what we did there was that we separate the uh, calculations that requires off node data completely from the local calculations. So that uh, helps heighten the uh, uh, communication latency. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, okay, so then the uh, conclusion and, and outlook. So, so far we saw uh, um, a better performance uh, in the multi mass CG routine um, from 1.5 to 2.5 in double precision. And uh, now we're uh, also trying the uh, quadrant mode, and uh, we haven't seen much performance difference compared to the all to all mode. And uh, then uh, our further step is to look into other routines in the milk code as well. So um, that is all. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Thomas, you're up. Do you remember what number you were? Uh, okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Thomas Koskala. I'm a postdoc at NERSC and I'm going to introduce my work on optimizing the particle in cell code XGC1 for Xeon Phi uh, KNL. Uh, so quickly about uh, the code. Uh, it's a particle in cell simulation code for uh, fusion plasmas in, in a tokamak and a Tokamak is basically it's a toroidal system where, the, where there's an external magnetic field that's set up in toroidal surfaces to confine the particles up until this, this X line that you see in the, in the figures here. And, and what's uh, special about XGC1 is that it, it can go across this X line. Most fusion codes actually blow up at the X line because they do a con coordinate transformation that, that diverges when you have this X point here. Uh, but XGC1, we use a Cartesian coordinate system and, and an unstructured mesh on the poloidal plane to, to solve the electric field. And that means basically we can, we can simulate any regions of the system. But what, what we are mostly interested in is, is the edge region here around the X line, where you can see here this, this turbulence forms and, and actually determines the power exhaust of the reactor. Um, so the code is, is written in Fortran. It's hybrid MPI plus OpenMP and, and scales up to tens of thousands of processors on, on like uh, Xeon and, and also on GPUs. Uh, so this is like the basic uh, flowchart of what happens in a PIC code. I, I refer, to you, refer you to Matthew LaBay's talk yesterday for a better explanation, but there is basically, there are compute steps. Uh, you, for, you solve fields and then move particles and, and in a, we're in a collisional regime, so we also have to take care of collisions. And then be in between there are mapping steps where you map between the quantities on the grid and quantities on the particles. Um, well what's a bit unique about XGC1 is that the, the s ion and electron scales are separated such that there is this electron subcycling loop here inside the ion push where that goes around about 50 times per ion time step and, and you're just pushing the electrons on. You're, you're not doing collisions, you're not doing field solves, you're just moving your electrons. And that is almost embarrassingly parallel but it ends up taking actually most of our CPU time. So this is what, I'm, what we're focusing on, on optimizing. So, so there are a few steps in the electron push. You, you need to do a magnetic field interpolation. Then you need to follow, follow the magnetic field up to your nearest uh, unstructured mesh planes. Find out where you are on those planes. Interpolate what is your electric field and then you can push and and, and go, go again. And, and so, so, so you go around this loop for every time step of every particle and you typically you have millions of particles and, and so you, and you go like 50 time steps for each ion time step. And, and these, these boxes here also pretty much represent the, the hotspots in the code. So, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what are, what are the, the main bottlenecks and, and it basically comes down to, to two things. Uh, so, so most of the computation in the way the code was, was originally written are done in, in loops with very short trip counts, basically like three or four or, or even scalar functions. And 
and because of this, this nature of the code where the particle takes a step, then it's somewhere on the grid and it needs values from the grid, and then it takes another step, and, it, and again it needs values from a different place, and you don't know beforehand where your step is gonna take you. You, you have do a lot of uh, mem random memory access that, that gives you gather instructions that are, don't vectorize very well. Uh, okay, in addition, there's in, in, in the search step, you have a loop with, with multiple exit conditions and, and then there are some, some the, the data is stored in, in some complicated data structures that don't give you nice unit strides, but instead uh, a lot of ugly memory access patterns. So, so what I've done is first of all, try to enable the vectorization of these short loops by inserting long loops inside the short loops so long, long loops over particles that can all go and, and access the grid in a, in a vector instruction. And then you, you still have the problem of, of the random access. So, so sorting, sorting particles helps you a little bit, although it doesn't get you rid of the gather instruction. So I've got last couple of days here, I've got some ideas on how to, how to improve on that. Uh, so then, the, yeah, did reordering of the data structures to, to structure of arrays, and then in some cases, go to structure of arrays of structures so that you can get like all your field components uh, in, in one operation or all your coordinate values in, in one operation. Uh, also, so we were able to, to do some improvements to the algorithms that helped and and I'm still working on, on improving the, the tiling of the particles. I'll come back to that at the end. Uh, so I'm gonna show a couple of slides of results using uh, the, the roofline plots. So the roofline plots have sh show you your performance as a function of your arithmetic intensity, so how much data you're retrieving from, from memory per operation. Um, there's gonna be a tutorial on this in the afternoon by Jack and so if you don't uh, follow this come to that tutorial and we'll explain it with more time but so this this is uh, the roof line on a, on a Haswell node on Cori phase one at NERSC and and this is like, like if you you follow those optimizations that I mentioned this is how you, we move up on the roof line so so we're all the optimizations are based on uh, our sort of I targeting to improve the vectorization and to get us up because we have a we have a very high arithmetic intensity due to the equations we're solving so there's a lot of room under the memory bandwidth room line roof line to move up if you can get the go code to vectorize well and uh, and okay so so I've got some numbers here uh, we managed to improve the runtime by about a factor of two on on Haswell and the arithmetic intensity also by a little bit, but there's still a lot of room to go. Uh, I should say that, that we're doing, we, we're using uh, SDE and, and VTune to collect these numbers from, from, from uh, benchmark runs. Um, so this is the same figure, but on a, on a KNL node, on a, in a quad cache mode, and it, the, it has a similar sort of qualitative uh, pattern, but, but what you see here is that when, when I'm not, when I'm doing a lot of random memory access, my arithmetic intensity goes down a lot, and, and this shows you that, that on, on Haswell, we're actually getting a lot of benefit from the large L3 cache. On KNL, we're, we're missing the cache much more often, and, and this is why are, are also our arithmetic intensity here is, is oh, first lower by about a factor three. And, and that's, so that's still something that, that I'm hoping to address by, by improving the, the tiling in the code. But that's still ongoing. Uh, and yeah, again, much, much room to go for with, with better vectorization. Uh, okay, so that's, that's all I wanted to say. So. So just to summarize, so we did, I've made 
improvements to algorithms. I've enabled some vectorization in the code and, and the memory layout. And we've got the speed up. So this is on the, on the KNL of, of about 1.7 to on, on Haswell. But there's still much, much room to go. And the main thing that's, that's I think is keep keeping, keeping the code down is on KNL is, is the DDR traffic. So there's a lot of L2 misses that, that we need to get rid of. And, and I think that this, the tiling blocking of the, partic uh, of the particle loop is, is gonna help with that. Uh, I did a simple implementation, but I ran into trouble with OpenMP forking overhead and actually turned out that, that there needs to be a sort of free writing of the main blocks in the code to, to get this running properly. So maybe I'll tell you about that in the next meeting. Thank you. Uh, when you're calculating your arithmetic intensity on the KNL and cache mode, uh, what's the denominator? Is it is it is it hits to the DDR, or, or, or are you counting accesses to the MCV RAM cache as well? Um, yeah, okay, that's a good point. So actually, I did count, count the arithmetic intensity in flat mode. So it, but it is so it is accesses to DDR. But because if you're if you're running in cache mode, Vtune considers your DDR cache, uh, your MCD RAM cache. And, and doesn't count it. So, so yeah, okay, so in this, this, this plot tip is, uh, is, is a bit confusing, but, but yeah, so the, so the arithmetic intensity is, is calculated in flat mode from MCD RAM accesses. And that, so the, the r case I'm running here is, is small enough to fit in MCD RAM. Thanks. Any questions? And uh, if not, I think uh, Tariq is up next. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tariq Mullas. I am a NISAP postdoc at NERSC, and I will talk about uh, some optimization work we have been doing on um, an application called EMGO, uh, which is one of the workloads in NERSC. So EMGO is a seismic imaging code that uses the finite difference frequency domain uh, methods. Uh, it uses a, a Krilov solver. Uh, it, um, the, 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 it, 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 the sparse matrix multiplication dominates the work in it, and it's uh, stored in ELL pack data format. And the data, is, the numbers are in double complex in this application. So this is a, uh, initial profiling of the original code, which is uh, MPI only code. Uh, and we ha here we are running on a single node in uh, Cori, which uh, which is composed of two Haswell sockets and one KNL node. Um, in the MC DRAM, in the MCD RAM in the flat uh, mode. And here the grid size is uh, what we would expect to have in the subdomain per node when we have uh, production runs. And here we can see that the SPMV operation is dominating the runtime because it's a severe, it's severely memory bound operation. And here uh, the other part, which is in uh, the blue color, is mostly stream-like operations in the code. And the communication here is uh, coming from the all, uh, the all reduce operations in the curl of solve and the point-to-point -point communication uh, for, uh, from the hell exchange in the stencil computation uh, in this code. 
And here, uh, I would like to note that the code is originally running on MPI only. That's why in the single node, we have this much uh, communication. So uh, since this is a lightning talk, I will just describe the optimization more briefly. So here are the speed up we gained on uh, different optimizations for Haswell and KNL. And this is a benchmark for the sparse matrix vector multiplication only. And it's running in shared memory. Uh, so that's why we are running also single socket in Haswell to have more representative performance. So first we moved from uh, ELL pack format to sliced ELL pack format because we found that there is more room to compress the to compress the data more or let's say to reduce the padding, the redundant padding in the sparse array format, wh uh, uh, which gave us some performance improvements. Uh, then we did the spatial blocking, where basically when we do the SPMV operation, the, ma the vector data is loaded multiple times from main memory because it cannot fit in cache. So what we did is that we changed the order of updating the, uh, the, uh, the matrix uh, or the accessing the matrix in a way that we bring the data of, uh, of the vector once, we, we use it multiple times so that we save memory transfers. So this did improve the performance in Haswell, but on KNL, although we, uh, on KNL, although we uh, found that the memory transfers from memory, from MCDRAM, reduced, still the performance got worse. And I believe this is because the uh, loop trip in, uh, in the special in blocking was very short due to the uh, small cache memory size in KNL. And here I show the combined optimizations. And most of the performance we got by was by performing uh, right-hand side uh, cache blocking. So in EMGO, the uh, operations are, uh, the uh, multiple sources are updated or right-hand side. Uh, like hundreds of sources are uh, typically updated in the code. So since the matrix data uh, transfer is the most expensive part, we amortize it by loading, uh, uh, up, uh, loading the matrix once or sections of matrix once and uh, update multiple right-hand sides while it's in the cache memory. Uh, and so this, in fact, uh, not only reduced the memory transfers on this uh, memory-bound code, it also improved the vectorization in KNL because we use now uh, uh, a raw measure matrix for the right-hand side, which provides uh, independent work for vectorization that's also uh, uh, contiguous in memory. And I will be describing this work in more detail in, the, in a case study in the roofline uh, tutorial in the afternoon if you are interested. So this generally we have uh, uh, this speed up on Haswell and KNL on the same results I've shown. And we can see that although we did improve the arithmetic intensity quite well here, we are, the code is still memory bound. So here I'm now going to move to the application uh, performance. So here I'm showing the runtime for the for reasonable pr uh, problem size and the lower is better on Haswell and KNL and the original and optimized code. Uh, we can see that we have a, uh, a factor of 1.8 speed up in Haswell and 3.3 in KNL. And generally KNL is 2.3x uh, speed faster than Haswell. This is mainly because this code is memory bandwidth bound and KNL has the high bandwidth memory. And I just want to note that uh, we are running here all the codes on using two threads per core, regardless in MPI or FNMT. And uh, uh, we are running on the FCDRAM only in flat mode. Uh, so here, the SPFV operation, uh, we have the improvements from the optimizations I mentioned earlier from the SPFV operations. And uh, we have re reduced the uh, MPI communication time by using hybrid OpenP MPI implementation where now we have less MPI ranks or processes to do the communication. And here we have the, some slowdown in the other part of the code, which is, uh, I'm still investigating it in the Haswell. Okay, so this is the multi-node scaling in, um, in, uh, in Gerti uh, no, uh, nodes. Um, so here we can see that uh, KNL is still faster than Haswell. But we, we can see a super linear uh, speed up from one node to 16 nodes in KNL. This is because, in fact, fewer nodes are slower than what we want, uh, mainly because uh, this is a large problem size, 200 cube. So when we are running lower number of nodes, uh, we cannot fit enough uh, right-hand side in the, uh, in the MCD ROM. So we have to use smaller right-hand side block size, which reduces the benefit of the optimization we are doing. 
but as we have more nodes, the, uh, the subdomain size becomes small enough that we can fit enough right-hand side for cache blocking. And this is what we would typically have for production. And looking at the, uh, uh, the breakdown of the, the, the time in, uh, in the same uh, result here, we can see that the communication time is increasing uh, as we would expect because we have more domains here. And I just want to note that here in Haswell, we are running uh, one MPI rank per socket. And in KNL, we are running um, uh, uh, two MPI ranks per, uh, per node. Uh, so this is a work in progress we are doing uh, by uh, basically now we are uh, since the right hand side uh, operations are independent or the sources updates are independent now we split the block in two pieces where we, we can do double buffering while computing in one we can do the communication for the other one uh, so this is just um, uh, some tau profiling for uh, in Haswell for eight node uh, for eight uh, MPI ranks and we can see the cyan and green here are computations and the purple are um, communication, we, we managed to overlap them very well in Haswell, but unfortunately the performance is really bad in KNL and we are I'm waiting to get a machine, w once we have the machine with proper profiling tools, we can investigate why this is happening. So in conclusion, we, uh, we gained most performance improvements by doing uh, right-hand side blocking, which amortized the cost of loading the matrix, which is the most ex expensive part. And we have quite good strong scaling, up to 16 nodes, as you, as you saw. So uh, next, uh, uh, I plan to work more into improving the multi-threading efficiency of the other parts of the application. Um, and we need to resolve the issue of uh, overlapping computation and communication in KNL. Uh, also, after uh, hearing John's talk about large-scale uh, uh, experiments on KNL, I think uh, the code may have some load balancing issues, so I'm going to investigate that too. So thank you. I uh, have a question. So are you using your own code for the sparse uh, matrix vector multiplications or are you using an existing uh, mass libraries to do that? Yeah, th that's a good question. I mean, I, I wish if I could find a library, I, I couldn't find a library that would allow me to bring a uh, matrix in ELL pack format and do multiple right hand side multiplication. I'm not sure if there's anything for that. I mean, you're using your own code, right? Okay. So you showed a pretty significant speed up from um, using multiple right-hand sides. Uh, how much of that speed up is attributable to the improved cache behavior and how much of it is from vectorization? Uh, that's really an excellent question. Uh, I, I think vectorization, I mean, I have to look up the, the numbers, uh, but vectorization was quite significant. I mean, when we used the column measure uh, format in the right-hand side, the performance was, I think, for X speed up or less. So we get like one more X speed up uh, by you doing something more friendly for vectorization. 